Hi, I'm Jenny Tooley, and I am on a mission to uncover how artists like myself make their lives work. I had stayed in the shadows. Today I'm talking with my friend and the only female director of photography I've ever worked with, Carissa Liked. Since graduating from Stephen F. Austin three years ago, she's already established herself as a force to be reckoned with. Today we're meeting on the top floor of a recently rejuvenated residential high-rise in downtown Dallas. Downtown Dallas is a continuously growing area with a thriving art scene, urban green spaces, fine dining, and more. Call it. Carissa, take one. I'm so excited to talk to you today. To, 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 it has been a long day. <laughs> I'm so excited to talk to you today, Carissa. I am glad to be here. Thank you. I was, um, I won't say surprised, but I'm happy that you took a risk to come. Mm -hmm. I know you're not used to being on this side of the camera. It's definitely really weird. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no. Uh, oh my gosh, that's me. Is that your phone? That's that cool. That is me. Go I should have known. Check it I'm out. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Marty, I'm sorry. So we're our smart cookies, which means we get to eat some cookies. <laughs> and I know you're chomping at the bit. So I made you some chocolate chunk cookies. Yes. Um, oddly they enough, so good. Even though I'm an avid baker and I had a cottage bakery, I did not have a recipe for chocolate really? chunk cookies. So this is a new one for me. Yeah. It looks really good. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Mm okay. Like, what is it gonna be good with chocolate? Mm. You're working a lot now. Mm-hmm. How long have you been out of school? Mm. This year will be three years in December. All right. Uh, I just hit two years. Mm-hmm. Two years out. I graduated in um, December 2015. So. When yeah. you were little, did you know that this is what you wanted to do? Like, was it somehow in your brain? Um, when was it? It was in sixth grade. I started editing. Um, I was a super nerd. Like, okay. I, I, I have an older brother, and uh, we would game, video, play video games a lot when we were younger. So I would take those video games and the cutscenes, and I taught myself how to like, download them off online and put them in Windows uh, Movie Maker. And I would make like little uh, videos with music, small music videos. And so that's how it kind of started. I made like 85 videos. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I put it on YouTube and I would get like some responses and stuff. My cookie is crumbling. Um, <laughs> I would watch behind the scenes stuff on mm -hmm. YouTube. That's, that's when YouTube started coming out with stuff. And so I would watch that and, uh, you know, special uh, featured stuff on mm -hmm. DVDs. I would watch all that and was just really interested in it. In, Wanted to know how, how exactly it worked. I think that's the difference. So we're, I guess, almost a generation apart because I could be your mom, which is <laughs> terrifying to me. <laughs> but I could be your mom. And um, I think that's the difference is there's so much accessible information now that mm -hmm. wasn't accessible mm. before. Like, mm -hmm. to see behind the scenes on a movie when I was in high school, I'm trying to think of how that would have happened. Um, because... Mm. There was no going online, or and there were no. I think we were now in VHS land, and we were shifting into DVD land, and that was starting to be a thing. Mm -hmm. um, so that's yeah. really interesting. Yeah, YouTube was like the best thing ever. And you already had an audience. It wasn't like yeah. your audience was the kids mm -hmm. in your neighborhood yeah. or your parents where you made little things and showed it to them. It was like literally you posted it online yeah. and people watched mm -hmm. it. I think I got about 2,000 subscribers. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, like, and I was like, I started in sixth grade and quit my sophomore year of high school. Uh, just, yeah. All right, so we've had the realization. It yeah. has happened. Mm -hmm. And then you said, okay, how do I make that happen? So as a high schooler, you were already making it happen because you were already making things. Yeah, just... But there was something for... You had to formalize it somehow. Yeah. Um, well, I wanted to know, like, how can I learn how to shoot cinematic or, like, make it more... Like, get a bigger audience, I guess, and learn everything about it. Yeah. Um, so I... Um, started looking into film schools. Okay. I didn't know how else to get into it. Um, so I found Stephen F. Austin um, in Nacogdoches, 
and applied, took the SAT, took the ACT, um, <laughs> got in barely, because I'm just, I just, school's not my thing, really. Um, but uh, got in, and then they had a cinematography program. So my parents and I, we went to go visit, and it was amazing. Um, and then that's when I decided, yep, that's, like, the moment I stepped out of the car at SFA, I was like, this is home. Like, I feel at home. This is it. Yeah. So you went to school to go to school, because I went to school and then I worked professionally like the whole time I was in school. I didn't know I was going to be an actor right. or any of the things that I'm doing yeah. today. And I like took five years to get out of school because I was literally putting classes off to go work and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Uh, yeah. I mean, so I did you, like... Yeah. Well, I did work. I, you did work. I, I worked on campus in the video production for sports games. So that's how I kind of honed in my camera operating uh, like framing. And that's where I really got like super comfortable in doing all of that. Mm -hmm. But um, on top of that, um, the cinematography program at SFA is very hands-on. And that's where I learned everything. Mm -hmm. Lighting, the lingo, etiquette. Um, how to light something more cinematic. Like, we had to go out. We didn't have a teacher to actually, well, we did, but they didn't teach us how to make our own craft. We had to figure that out ourselves. Mm -hmm. So we had equipment available for us, and we, I had a really great um, graduating class. We were all really still kind of close, and we keep in contact, and um, it was like five of us, and we would go felt like every weekend we were shooting a short film. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, towards our senior year, it felt like uh, we were shooting almost every other weekend on each other's projects. Um, and we all helped each other. That's where I made my first demo reel, and that's kind of what got me going professionally in Dallas. So, yeah, SFA. <laughs> 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 and how did you decide that Dallas was where you were going to be, at least for right now. I'm just because I'm from here. Mm -hmm. um, I wanted to just kind of come back and save money and build a network here. And because I knew there was already a film industry here um, because of alumni from SFA were like, go to Dallas. I was like, oh, I'm from there. OK, I'll do that. And so, yeah, I did. So are you saving money now to? <sighs> I'm debating about going to L.A. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, I probably will. I've, um, almost every gig I run into someone from L.A. and they're like, I'll talk to them about it. And they're like, yeah, you'll, you'll always stay busy out there, you know, after the end of the gig. And, like, they've seen me work and stuff. And they're like, you'll be fine. Mm -hmm. So it's just, like, a matter of time of pulling the trigger on it. And are you doing that by, do you have your own house or do you live with your parents or? Uh, yeah, so, um, I'm helping out with my mom. My dad actually passed away the, uh, a semester before I graduated mm -hmm. in 2015. So kind of helping her out too and also saving. It's a, kind of a blessing yeah. and, and a disguise, but um, yeah, so. So um, tell me, how do you title yourself? What do you, are you a director of photography or? I ran into a friend, or no, I didn't run into a friend. It was after a shoot last weekend. And I was talking to him. We talked for hours after shooting. And by the way, we shot on 60 millimeter film. <gasps> it was awesome. <laughs> I learned how to load uh, film and take it out and put it in the can. And it was a really cool experience. Awesome. Um, anyway, we were chatting. And he was like, so what do you want to do? And I was like, kind of hit me. I was like, "What? I, do, I know what I want to do. I want to be a director of photography. He's like, then just do it. And so I did it. I was like, I'm going to do it. So from that day, I kind of was like, OK. And the moment I did that, uh, I got a call two days later. People from Tennessee called me, and they were like, uh, we got your name from so-and-so. We'd like to fly you out to direct to be the director of photography for a music video. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, wow, OK. OK, yes. <laughs> Excellent. And then today, actually, um, an artist contacted me, and he wants me to direct, be the director of photography for his next mu music video in May. Mm -hmm. So I was like, OK, let's do it. And then, and then <laughs> it was last week, I think, um, another director contacted me. She's a sci-fi short film, mm -hmm. and she was looking for a DP. 
And she was hesitant to ask me because people assume that I'm really busy, which, you know, it's a good assumption to make. But um, I was like, no, what, what do you, what's, what's it about? And she went on to explain it. And I was like, yeah, let's do it. So I've got stuff lined up. And the moment I accepted that, things started falling into place. That's amazing. I love hearing stories like that. It's, yeah. it's almost like, you know, there's that whole idea, you manifest things, once, yeah. but you have to really commit to them and decide yeah. to do them. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so that's an amazing story. I love hearing it. And I know that that's just going to continue for you because you're an amazing DP. Thank you. I mean, a lot. I'm so grateful. I love this music that we're getting to listen to today, too. It's like some little music <laughs> happening. Um, yeah, it, you have a, an ability to talk to a director in a language they understand mm -hmm. and take a script and understand its language and then translate that into a visual language, which is... Mm -hmm. And then you know all the technical because yeah. you don't, you do everything. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. I almost feel like a visual therapist <laughs> <laughs> when like talking to a director in pre-production. I just listen. I let them talk. It's their thing. And then I'll kind of give my two cents about it. Mm -hmm. Intuition kind of kicks in at that time. Mm -hmm. And then like just how with Stuck, I completely listened to you that one meeting. Mm -hmm. It took a, a week or two to think about how it was going and, you know, how you wanted it and the tone and the emotions involved with it and, um, you know, executed. Mm -hmm. And we did good. We did good. <laughs> On the tiny, tiny budget that we had, we did yeah. amazing. Yeah, it was a lot so of fun. Thank you. Yeah. So as far as from like where you are right now, you would like to go to LA. Mm -hmm. Which what is what does what drives you to do what you're doing? I would say like my family. Mm -hmm. um, we've been through a lot, and um, you know like since I was little, we've been we like live paycheck to paycheck, and my parents always taught me to follow your dream and strive for it. Mm -hmm. as best as you can and um, you know they taught me a lot of discipline and you know just to go for it and so that's kind of like one of the drives and um, you know my dad always told me to practice in basketball he kind of taught me a lot about it um, he's like you're dominant in your right hand but you need to be twice as strong with your weaker arm mm -hmm. and so I kind of take that and apply it to my work ethic. And that's another thing that drives me too. And it's just a passion the thing. And I want to, my services I can give, it's like my purpose. And I'm um, kind of self-aware about all that. And, you know, I want to impact people mm -hmm. with whatever project that's going on. So it's purpose-driven too? Because in the... Yeah. In a lot of our industry, it can be so goal-driven or money-driven, things like that. To have a place to start from that's purpose-driven, I find it to be helpful. Yeah. It keeps I mean, me going. Yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, yeah, we need money and we need to survive. It's, yeah, absolutely. Um, but just kind of like when you're in a the theater and you're at a premiere or something, um, look around and look at people's facial reactions that's what I want to mm. give people. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Or like, I don't know, a documentary and people are like crying or something. <laughs> <You know? laughs> but, yeah. Did your parents, when, when you had decided, okay, I'm going to take on something that's an art form mm. as a career choice, how did they react? They were all for it. Excellent. Yeah. I love that. They were like, do what you want. Do it. Go good. <laughs> good. Um, yeah, they had no issue with it. They said, be happy, follow your dreams. Because, um, you know, they their job was to provide for a family. And that's what they wanted. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah. Uh, my dad was a freelancer at one point. 
And I would I saw that because I freelance. I'm not with a certain company or anything. But and I remember him being super happy because he was his own boss and he could do whatever. And I was like, I kind of like that, but it's kind of scary at the same time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it is. But you make it work. Like you can't stress out about money or you know the next job, even though even though you might not have something for the next month, which was my case about a week ago. <laughs> How do you deal with that kind of stress? Um, work on your own passion project. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, stay busy. You know, um, I go hang out with friends. Uh, we, uh, what else do I do? Take care of stuff. Because like whenever mm. you're in a, in a really busy time, you know, you you go into this world, this film world, and you don't you don't get to go to the store. You go you go you wake up in the morning, you drink your coffee, you drive to set, you're on set till like 14 hours or more, depending on what it is, and then you go home and sleep and you rinse repeat. Right. For however long it is, yeah. like it could be yeah. weeks, months. Yeah. yeah. So take care of stuff when you have downtime. Downtime is there's a reason for downtime. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like so, yeah. I organized my gear. That's right. That's what I did. <laughs> you organized gear. All right. <laughs> and you said that your family, their goal was to have a family. Mm -hmm. Do you have any ideas or intentions of having a family? Or what would your family look like, do you think, at this point in your life? Uh, I mean, I'm only 25. Mm -hmm. I'm not really thinking about it. But I think eventually, probably. Um, I first want to get my career, like, really, really going. Because I'm just... Two years in, yeah. like, yeah, uh, yeah. I'm sure I'll find somebody and they'll understand how the industry works and, you know, <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> no. it, it definitely make that a topic of conversation early on. <laughs> <Yeah>. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>